Joining me now for a Newsnight exclusive, Speaker Emerita, Democrat Nancy Pelosi of California. Speaker Pelosi, thank you for being here. I do want to start on this very important foreign policy issue. Speaker Johnson has this four-part plan that he laid out to approve funding over Ukraine that's been stalled, funding for Israel, funding for Taiwan and other priorities. Should Democrats actually help him move that forward? Well, I think what he is doing gives his own party a choice. If you want to support uh, the security for Israel, which we all do, but if that's all they want to do, they can vote for that. There are plenty of votes in the Congress to support Ukraine, and it is strongly bipartisan. But not all of them don't want to support it, so they don't have to. And again, the Taiwan is very bipartisan. That's not uh, so much of a challenge. So I don't know why, uh, if their objection is that he's giving them all the choice that they could want, but they don't want us to have any choice, then they don't understand what the role of speaker is. If ultimately there is a border component of this, which I know some of his members want to add into this, yeah. what do Democrats do then? Well, there can't be a border. They, 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 will, they may have a border component, but it'll be its own separate bill. And then their members can vote for the border component. They have a majority of the House. They may be able to pass that. But you have to remember, we are the House of Representatives. We have a Democratic Senate, a Democratic president, and if we're going to really help the people of the Middle East and Ukraine, we have to have a bill that is signed. And I think that they're working, I hope that they're working with the Senate for a bill that will pass the Senate. The Speaker, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Speaker Johnson on CNN uh, today with Jake Tapper, he did an interview, and he said that the United States should stand with Ukraine for freedom to make sure that Vladimir Putin doesn't steamroll ac across uh, a European <coughs> country. Do you give him credit for that? I mean, you hear the anger in his conference over mm -hmm. this issue. Do you give him any credit for uh, coming forward now and saying this is a matter of historical importance? Well, it is. Uh, I think it's courageous of him to say, because you have to understand that in his own caucus, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee and the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, two leaders respected on both sides of the aisle, have said that Russian propaganda has infiltrated the Republican side of the aisle. Mm -hmm. So he has to deal with that. And for him to say uh, that uh, the, the democracy in Ukraine is an issue that we must support is a, a bold statement. If he... Um... And I don't want to praise him too much because that'll turn off some of his. <laughs> well, you members. know, there's nothing wrong with, with there's nothing wrong with praising your your opponents necessarily. In no, it case, is you think in that terms of the, the right reaction thing. that he might get on I mean, his side it, of the aisle. If if <laughs> this aid doesn't pass and Ukraine is in this dire situation, do Republicans uh, deserve the blame yes, for a failure positively. of Ukraine to win? No, no question about it. The the facts are that the uh, the president and the bipartisan legislation from the Senate has carefully put forth what is needed to help Ukraine pr protect democracy, win in that fight, and other provisions, uh, humanitarian assistance in, the, um, in Gaza, uh, assistance for Israel to protect itself, the issue that relates to ta Taiwan. The rest. This has all been passed in a bipartisan way in the Senate. The president stands ready to sign the bipartisan Senate bill. For months, we've been asking the House to pass the bill. At one point, we'd have had over 300 votes for it. That is uh, diminishing, but nonetheless still a strong majority uh, in the House. So, yeah, I know it would be right at the doorsteps of the Republicans who have, again, been a, a show. There's a Putin caucus on the Republican side. You have to understand that. And that's what, unfortunately, the Speaker has to undergo, a Putin caucus, which just espouses what Putin is saying there. It's really a tragedy for our country. Is Ukraine losing this war? Well, uh, hopefully not. But uh, if we can act now, I think, uh, with uh, enough distance, with enough speed, with enough heft in what we send there, uh, then I think they can win the war. Was it a mistake for the Biden administration in the early stages of this war? There was a lot of deliberation and hemming and hawing about whether they send uh, certain types of weaponry in yeah. and what sequence, and, and is it too soon? Would it provoke Putin? Was all of that back and forth wasted time in no, retrospect? No, I think that uh, the president deserves a great deal of credit. 
because of the initiatives to help Ukraine have been multilateral. It's been the uh, EU, it's been G7, it's G20, even other countries outside of Europe, uh, Japan and some other countries in Asia have been very supportive. And so you have to move in a way that not only uh, enables you to send your support, but to have the support of other countries as well, because they need a great deal of support. Do you think on the issue of Israel that where things stand right now between the United States and Israel, this relationship um, has been tense for, for several weeks, maybe months yeah. now. Uh, is it too late to repair that relationship between President Biden and Netanyahu? No, of course, it's never too late to repair a relationship, but uh, Netanyahu has to come around. He has not been a peace-oriented person. Do you think it's possible for him to be? I've always questioned that for decades now as to whether he could, was capable of peace, wanted to do peace, or was afraid of peace. And uh, I feel so sad about what happened on October 7th. It, it was brutal. What Hamas, which is a terrorist organization, did in uh, Israel was horrible. And the response that Israel has has made is one that has serious uh, uh, humanitarian concerns. And so we'd like to see support for Israel to defend itself as in our interest for them to be secure in that dangerous neighborhood, but also for us to have prevent um, starvation and famine and hydrate, dehydration among children and families. And, You've said in the yeah. past that you do not think that the United States that military aid that they provided uh, since October 7th has been responsible for some of the um, serious attacks on, frankly, on civilians that have occurred in yeah. Gaza. But when you look at the World Central Kitchen attack yeah. that happened that really shocked the world, if it turns out that American weaponry was involved in that, uh, would that change your view about what needs to happen going forward as it relates to the provision of lethal aid to Israel? Well, what we have said in our letter uh, a week ago or so was that uh, the, uh, there has to be an investigation of how that happened, and we shouldn't be giving any more weapons until that happens. Now, they, the Israelis have, are conducting an investigation. I myself think we have to go beyond that. I think there should be an independent investigation of how that happened. That was beyond the pale. But nonetheless, uh, the, the uh, letter that we sent was a very discreet in terms of you must investigate this because we need to know how this could have happened. Is it still true in your mind, given where things stand, that Israel is still one of the United States' closest allies? Well, we are close allies, yes, and for a long time, it has been in our national security issue for us to support, to support Israel. We have shared values, we have shared security concerns and the rest. And make no mistake, Hamas is a terrorist organization, and they have in their criteria that they will, the destruction of the state of Israel. So understand that this is a dangerous kind of situation. However, what, however, the, the response to that is managed has to be in a way that doesn't produce famine and starvation and dehydration and dislocation for people. There has to be a more discreet way to, uh, uh, to secure Israel.